Hey everybody, welcome to Livecast. It's Monday night. It is Monday night, right? It's Monday night. I'm happy to be here. I felt like it was a long weekend, and it was not a long weekend. Do you hear the bells? Do I hear buzz? The bells? I hear the bells, the church bells. Right on time, people. Exactly right on time. Except, you know what? My computer says 6.02, and so does my phone. Yeah. Hmm. We're two minutes late. Mm. No, by, just by the, Apple time, but by church <laughs> by bell Apple time, time we're okay. But, but I go by Apple time. God's I go time. by church bell That's time. like Greenwich Mean Time for <laughs> me. What about um, Greenwich Nice Time? <laughs> this doesn't even oh, make God. sense. <laughs> so you remember that Mike Isabella from Top Chef season six, from Top Chef All Stars, from Bandolero, and from Graffiato in Washington D.C. was here. There we are. Taking he, a picture. He's an East Coaster. He's an East Coaster, and he makes me look thin in the picture. <laughs> we go back to that for a sec? He does. I pushed him up front. And yeah, you he did. makes you look normal height. And sucked in my... Uh, <laughs> and despite what Kelly may think, I did not pull a little bit of white t-shirt down underneath the sweater. You may not have that time, but have you been known to do that? I've done it before. Okay. It's a look. You want to have <laughs> it looking go. right. Wait. I, I didn't do... Wait, what? Wait. Is she saying that you have like a special affinity for no, having a little bit says, of white t-shirt yes. showing he under your sweater? He pulls it out. Why do you do that? Well, because I like the way it looks. Let's take a look and at it. And sometimes when he wears a but, belt, he pushes so that the shirt into the belt no, behind the belt No, that wasn't. That wasn't. So no, that I don't do that anymore. You did that. That, right? I, that was not intentional. What I did there with Mike Isabel. <laughs> of course, it's not. Anyway, it was a great guy, great guest, great interview. If you didn't see it, go back to Thursday and watch it. Great Where do thing. they go? They go to the samlivecast.com. They mm-hmm. click on episodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there it will be. Say Mike Isabella. Ooh. That's not it. Oh. You yes, you right click there. on you yes. click on that. <laughs> uh, that by the way, th- uh, you can go back to that. That Chapino we made last night. I made last night. Shit, I didn't have any green onion for it. God damn it. You know, you didn't remember <laughs> I the green. I knew it was onion. missing something. <laughs> You know, I have this green onion thing. I can't not use green onion. I think it's called a fetish. It, I, I guess <laughs> technically it could be a fetish. I love the green onion. I love it. It's the best onion that there is. It's a great garnish. I love the green onion. <laughs> Who couldn't like it? Matt it goes wants in to everything. know what your shirt says, Sam. My shirt says, <clears throat> if you are what you eat, I'm freaking delicious. <laughs> I am freaking delicious. Pretty nice. I walked into the bank today. Uh, to put a check in manually because you had my debit card, Max. Thank you, and you why? still don't have it because he, he, I gave it to him last why? night. Why? I went. Why? He needed to buy something last night. Yes, I did. That he didn't have to pay for. And the woman looks up at me from her little chair and goes, "Hi." Oh wait, let me look at that shirt. <laughs> and then she talked about it. No way. Anyway, I was saying. So Mike Isabella, awesome, right? Great. And I don't think anybody heard this. He's prepping his stuff. And he, he walks in the front door Thursday night and he goes, I, I didn't bring, I forgot my knives. I go, I got knives, no problem. And I'm handing him things. He goes, do you have a blah? And I got this and that. And I had the food for him and stuff. And about 15 minutes after he's here, he goes, do you cook? <laughs> oh. I remember him saying that. that. Was... And I, yeah, I go, I like to cook. Oh. Did you ask him why he asked that question? No. He clearly had no. It's not that he should know who Sam the Cooking Guy is, but he just clearly had no idea where he went. Some press person said you're going there to be interviewed, mm-hmm. true, and he probably mm-hmm. went fine. Mm-hmm. It just struck me as funny. Small fish in a big sea, dude. Thank oh, God I'm not man. insecure. Uh, yeah, I don't. Remember. Yeah, that was that was funny. Mike Isabella, <laughs> do you cook? And then I saw him at the uh, at the wine food festival on Saturday. Mm-hmm. He was standing in his book signing place in the the tent with the books and stuff. And somebody there uh, said, Sam the Cooking Guy, he's famous. And Mike goes, I know that. I don't, I don't know that he knew that. <laughs> he might have just been saying that. Hey, speaking of the Food and Wine Festival, yeah. if there's anybody that wants to go to one, head to San Diego next year. It's That's the one to go to? Yeah, it's, it's the biggest it's one on great. the West Coast. Mm-hmm. Do they have one in San Francisco and L.A. as well? Uh, Do you know? Mm-hmm. Lynn? I imagine they have they, some kind they of festival. Must. They have to have some yeah. of this. Yeah. They have I different ones. Go. But I think just a... um, somebody was telling us, it might have been Mike, he said that uh, 
Aspen yes. and Miami are the Miami are the two the, ones. The, really the big notorious um, ones. But then we f- closely follow. I, mean, I think this is really the biggest. It was a huge event, of. and there were tons of people. It was like five thousand people there. Anyway, uh, I made the Chapino. We made it once before on the show. You have to make it. You have to make it. Onion, garlic in a pot, some San Marzano uh, tomatoes crushed up, some wine, let it do its thing for a little bit, get bubbly, get delicious, and then you put in your seafood. I put in shrimp, I put in scallops, I put in mussels, and I, ha- I bought some sea bass and cut it up and put it oh, in. Yeah. Holy it, crap. It was like butter. And you can have all of the, 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 the brothy sauce part done. The day before, whatever, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. But once it's hot and you put the seafood in, the shellfish and whatever you've got, you're like 10 minutes and, it, and it's out. Whatever Some you do, crusty bread. don't call it fish stew in front of your teenager. <laughs> oh, because no, he won't eat it. <laughs> Stupid. Sam, have you made your paella yet on the show? The one that yes. You so we did the cheater paella. We've yeah, made one. cheater paella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really it was good, too. It was good, too. Um... Thanksgiving Thursday night. Yeah. Get ready to get fat, everybody. By the way, I've seen plenty of commercials and things that refer to Thursday as Thanksgiving Day. No, we don't say that's the wrong one. (laughs) We're saying Thanksgiving Eve is not a... I'm just saying. Uh, No, no, no. I argued with Kelly yesterday. I heard Thanksgiving Day. She goes, no, it's just Thanksgiving. No, I'm hearing places say Thanksgiving Day. Therefore... Ipso facto, that implies there's a Thanksgiving Eve. No, that and implies people aren't just saying it, and no, I don't know why. Not. You don't we say we are happy Thanksgiving Day. You just, say happy Thanksgiving. We're arguing about this, I, like totally different things. Like all of us are. Just, I can't I help it. It is what it is. Um, you should coin Thanksgiving Eve though. You should have your Thanksgiving Eve thing. I should do that. Thanksgiving Eve with Sam the Cooking Guy, because who does that? Hey, we are going to have a Thanksgiving Eve show. Actually, we are. Yeah. yeah. Join us on Thanksgiving Eve, everybody. <laughs> Can I just say that um, you're going to go to somebody's house for Thanksgiving. If you go to somebody's house for Thanksgiving, you're going to take a gift. Don't walk in without a gift. You can't walk in without a gift. Are you going to do that? Are, are people walking in without a, without a little something? Wait, mm. I have a question now. Yeah? <laughs> because, okay, because Jilly and I were actually talking about this the other day. We're going um, to a fam- We're going as a big, as an extended family, I guess. Yes. To our family member's house. Yes. In San Diego. Yes. And you and mom will be bringing a gift, correct? Yes. So this was what we were discussing. She thinks that the two of us, Jilly and I, should still also bring a gift. I agree. And that's why I love her. Oh, okay. So you guys think Absolutely. that that's what... You just uh, okay. bring a little hostess gift. You bring a little it's something. It's not like a big thing. Even though... Okay, but even yeah. though you guys are technically the representatives yeah, of the no, group... Yeah, but no, no, no. You're a big boy no, no, no. now. Here's it, yeah, you're not you're 11. You're a big boy. But we're going to be coming in the same car. Doesn't no, matter. No, you're no, you're no. not 11 anymore. You're a big boy. <laughs> that's so, why I love Jilly. <laughs> but when By the way, can I just say this? Yeah. Jilly hugged me this uh when she was here this weekend twice mm-hmm. uh more than she's ever hugged me before really i feel like we've hit a new uh, we've hit a new spot in our relationship <laughs> congratulations <laughs> sam I'm telling you. no it's always been like a. it's always been sort of what looks to me like a like a high school hug you know uh-huh. Like the kids in high school hug a lot these days, and it's just like a quick in and out kind of thing. She gave me like a two handed, real, like legitimate. I can't wait to hear their conversation. <laughs> Weird. She's part of the family. She's what? feeling, I think she's feeling more like part of the family mm-hmm. now. Mm. Well, she was here with uh, the older folk the other night. <laughs> we had fun. Yeah, we did have fun. We had Chipino. With the Chipino. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so you're going to somebody's house Thanksgiving, you got to take a gift. What are your options? Wine. Wine. <laughs> yeah. Here's my option. Go to We Olive, buy a good bottle of olive oil. Hell yeah. And a baguette. It's not going to kill you. A good bottle of olive oil and a baguette. That's a no-brainer for you, It's Max. a no-brainer, Max. Yeah, you're right. It's the simplest thing to do. You know you walk in, they're going to bust it open right then and there. Uh-huh. They're going to appreciate the thoughtfulness, Especially not being a bottle baguette. of wine. A bottle of wine is too, it's too hackneyed. It's too done. Mm-hmm. It's too overdone. 
Not if it's a good bottle of wine. I know. But, but then, okay, so, but then for somebody like, what if, uh, like, the people that we're going to, I'm, yeah. they love wine, and I'm sure they've got, you know, lots of great bottles of wine. And that's the reason I'm they don't gonna, need yeah, another bottle of wine. I'm not going to be able to bring them something you can't compete that's up with to that. their level. Exactly. Exactly. Uh-huh. So, you, but you can give them a great bottle of olive oil. Yeah. But bring it with a baguette. I think it's a great thing to do. Yes. Why don't you bring a baguette? The olive oil and some duca. Yes. Oh. That's a good idea. Right. You could do that with making one stop. You could, for, yes, well, you need the bread for that. Bread, olive oil, and the duca. And the duca is that Mediterranean mix of ground nuts and stuff mm-hmm. that you dip the bread into the olive oil mm-hmm. and then into the duca and eat that. That will blow their minds. Do that, Max. Are you going to do that? Done. Yep. Hey, hey uh, sometimes you say hey, done and then done no, doesn't happen. Hey, mom, what else am I bringing? <laughs> well, no, no, just let me hear you commit to done on yes, this. Yes, I'm going to do it. Yes. So, I olive made, oil, bread, and duca. I made and Max two commit pumpkin pies. to make pumpkin pies. <laughs> and he's making pumpkin pies? <laughs> wow. I thought you made the pumpkin yeah, pies. Yeah, I guess that, I guess that pumpkin said, pies aren't no, enough. I have I, to go out and get a gift as well. I overheard Jilly last night saying that Max made pumpkin pies. I'm like, perfect. You could make the pumpkin. I'll make something else. But you that's what? nice. That the reason I made the pumpkin pie too was because I was afraid there wasn't going to be pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving. <laughs> so you just wanted it. So I needed to have my <laughs> fill. Uh, I remember a couple of years ago having, it wasn't pecan pie. Well, it was. The top half was pecan pie. The bottom half was shortbread. Ooh. Talk about rich. Sounds really good. That thing was insane. I bet. I've been asked to do the turkey hotline at Fox on Thursday. I think I'm going to do it. I have to be there at 7 to 10. Kelly, right. you'll be sleeping. I like it. There's, things that, there's things that I've been asked to do as Sam the Cooking Guy that I say yes to for sure once. Mm-hmm. Like when I was asked to be a judge at the Hooters bikini contest. <laughs> I felt like I had to do that just because I might not get asked again. And if I said no, all of my male friends would <laughs> make fun of me. Trust me, I enjoyed the day. Uh, the evening it was a lot of fun but asked to do the turkey hotline i did it last year it was a lot of fun and i hope i gave good advice <laughs> what, what was did you get stumped at all i wasn't actually stumped what can i make what temperature how do i do this that kind of stuff i was actually quite pleased with my uh my responses hmm. yeah you were scared going in i was a little scared going yeah. in <laughs> did you have cheater cards i had i had sume you on one side of me from Saffron here in San Diego, mm-hmm. amazing Thai food. And I had somebody that was mean on the other side of me. I don't remember who the hell she <laughs> somebody was. Somebody that was mean? <laughs> she was like some, she came late and she was like some professional chef. Oh. And you know, here's the problem. Some of the chefs, I have to say, most of the chefs in this town uh, are okay with me. They understand I'm not trying to steal their jobs, of course, because I couldn't. I pose no threat to them you, because I can't. Are you sure they know you cook? But some, well, I don't know. No, I wasn't sitting beside Mike Isabella. But whoever this woman was, she was like, she had like no time for me. My shit was just complete nonsense as far as she was concerned. Hmm. Stupid. Screw them. Hey, so I get it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I get asked to do the turkey hotline two years in a row. Mm-hmm. Completely down for it. Hooters bikini contest. Completely down for it. Tap the first keg at the first event of San Diego Beer Week with the mayor totally down for it mm-hmm. i was also asked if i would be a salvation army bell ringer this season oh, God. Uh, that's not working for me what is that like out front of Vaughn's? like yeah. yeah do they just make you do that by yourself or no i think you're there by yourself and look at i think the salvation army is a great cause and i've done the 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 sam event at the croc center here four years we mm-hmm. made uh, i think a hundred thousand dollars through the event over the over the the years we did it three years i think lots of fun dig the salvation army they do great work mm-hmm. but there's something way not jewish about <laughs> ringing the bell for the sally ann that just came, seems, seems a little like out of character it, i don't know what it is it seems like a big waste of um your talents if you were going to say yes like it, i feel like if they're going to ask you to do something they should ask you to like host an event and get on no stage i think and it's do completely something, perfect for my talent just randomly i could, I could ring a bell on street but, but i think the po- the point is if if there's a any volunteer there's a celebrity or somebody there that p- 
people know they'll pitch in more money or something. I guess, yeah. It just brings more, you know, notor. It just to me, it just seem, feels a little off. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't be saying that. Hey, uh, we. Why don't you tell everybody what we're gonna be cooking? And we're, we're making a we're making a crab thing, a crab thing. Well, yeah, we can go make that now. A um, crab thing. Can you elaborate a little bit on? The yeah, crab it's thing? Ca- crab and cheese in a dip, and <laughs> yeah, it's hot, and dip. it goes in the oven. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to call it other than a crab thing. I think it says crab dip on the website or something, but it's delicious. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna make that. I'm ready to make that. We're ready too. We'll just wait for. Shannon, <laughs> to make that, I got some pictures I want to show. Once we come back out of the kitchen, I want to talk about the event from the other night. I want to talk about something I posted that I got different reactions to. I got an email about Rachel Ray. I don't understand. I want to read it and have somebody help me. Somebody help me with it. So but I'm ready. So. I'm ready if you're ready to go. Come. We're ready. Let's do it. <laughs> Yeah, so here's what this is. My oven's on to 350. You got to start with that. Oops. Oops. I just, I just heard... That was you. This oh, rustle a little okay. bit. And I thought it was okay, but... I always get a little bit nervous when I hear you say oops. <laughs> no, it's Not okay. my favorite thing to hear. So, look, at, I'm a fan of... If I, if I had time, I would have been to... Would have gone to Costco today, and I would have bought that... Um, What's that Baltimore crab place called? Um, I don't know. I have no idea. Baltimore crab place? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Old hey, Slappy, you know what that uh, Baltimore crab place is called? Slappy. <laughs> At least he's slap happy. <laughs> look at it. No look what happened. Oh, that's the worst. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now what? Here's a can opener. You God. bust it open with a knife. This is working. Oh, it did work. Uh, so look at I love this crab. This is this is the claw. And look how beautiful that is, Shan. It's nice. What's that? Somebody, Phillips crab. Costco sells a big one pound can of it. This is half a pound of the of the claw meat. Uh, if you bought the lump meat. Uh, it would have been more expensive and bigger, more beautiful pieces, but this is not about uh, beautiful pieces because we're going to mix this up. And we're going to mix it up with this. We're going to put about a third of a cup of Swiss cheese in here. Does that look like a third of a cup? About. <laughs> I think it is. Uh, same of Parmesan. How soon is that upstairs? Who's he talking to? He talks loud. Um, I need some red onion, about the same thing. And I have it chopped because last night, Kelly made uh, this beefsteak tomato salad. Big, beautiful, thick slices of heirloom tomatoes. Unbelievable. With crumbled blue cheese, this diced red onion that I diced, and uh, this little dressing that I make on top of it. Oh my God, it was so good. Diane, at this very moment, is trying to diagnose why I don't feel good because I taste metal in my mouth all day. Oh, God. Yeah, what about me? And she actually, the only reason I said that is because she asked me what I ate, and I forgot to tell her that. That's funny. What did you eat? I uh, don't know. Cholula and uh, Worcestershire. Hey, I love this. Peter Hatton in Double Oak, Texas, got committed to making pumpkin pies as well. <laughs> rooks? That's my man. Does that mean rook then? Huh? What? You got rooked in? So, some Worcestershire, about a teaspoon. What about the same of this? How and then many we just mix. Is a teaspoon? I don't know. <laughs> a couple. You know his it depends, precise measurements. It depends how. So, but now you gotta mix this well and bust it up a bit. How funny, Don says, try drinking a Bloody Mary with no vodka. I wonder what the tomato does. It's probably healthy. Well, when your dog gets in a fight with a skunk, you wash it in tomato <laughs> juice, right? Isn't that true? Yeah. So maybe there's some version of, 
All right. Oh, cool. Diane says that she always goes to Phillips in Ocean City, Maryland, for crab mm-hmm. cakes. Oh, my goodness. I bet Phillips that's is so up. good. Wait, is Phillips um, like a, 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 a retail brand or a restaurant type? They thing? have a restaurant. Uh, they have some restaurants, too. And then they send out crab all around the country? But they send out crab all the way all over the place. Because yeah. Maryland is like the number one crab Maryland's area like the major in the world, crab right? I had a, a lobster roll in Ogunquit, Maine. Ogunquit? Yeah. So look, now we just have to fill up these guys. And I'm, I could have used I could have used one big thing like like this to put it in. But I like the idea of these little things for Lynn's photo. So I'm gonna do this. So he's got like one all by himself to take pictures of. And he'll think all one by himself to eat because that's what he does. Ooh, we had baked feta last night too. That was great as well. Yeah. Well, I could Did you announce use... that Zach was home from college and we've seen him collectively about two hours? <laughs> I think that people are not so... He comes in the so... he leaves out Hey, of he's got people to see and places to go. Obviously. I think people... Parents are not surprised by that. I can tell Max behavior. is so jealous he's not in college. Uh, I can just I hear it in his voice. He's so lucky. Well, now what I'm going to cook the rest of this in. Oh. I got to put it in something. How many? Oh. Okay, now it's not even enough in this. <laughs> I probably could have just packed those things better. Who cares? On a baking sheet? We can get them out easy. And then how long are they going in for? I'm going to go in about 15 minutes, maybe. Mm. Maybe a little bit more. I got some bread thing. I need to do something with some bread, too. Yeah. When it, uh, when it comes out. And I could just slice it and have it cold. I could heat it up. I could grill it. Give me a little heads up in about... Uh, about 10? In about 10, and I'll just turn that on, okay? Okay. And then slice the bread, and then we're almost there. Look at it. See how simple that was? So if you're thinking of doing this for Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Then um, make it the morning of, and just cover it up and put it into the fridge. There's nothing wrong with that. Just take it out so it's not completely ice, ice cold a little bit before, and then... And then just cook it. We have literally made so many recipes that you could bring to your Thanksgiving dinner that are just going to be different and cool and make you stand out from, I mean, your family and friends. So do For it. For sure. Just imagine walking in the door with the dukkha. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. It's going to be such a hit. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking the, uh, the pesto pizza oh, that we made, I don't know how long ago. Uh, forever ago, but that's one a of my go. Ago. That's one of my go tos. It's mm-hmm. so easy. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, boboli crust. Yep. Cream cheese or just some type of cheese spread. The herb spread. Pesto. The alouette. Done. Pesto and parmesan. Yeah, and then four ingredients. You jacked so up. Good. You messed up two of them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it is. My shit can't get any simpler. We did that on episode seven. Oh I my have a picture. goodness! Are you kidding me? Oh, he doesn't even have a picture. Look at that. No picture Crazy. of the, uh, wow. We weren't take were we not taking pictures of food No, then? no we, we weren't. At least started around like episode what, 20 or 30? Something like wow. that. Yeah. Yeah. But just go make it. You could literally mm-hmm. buy the ingredients on the way to the person's house, throw it together in 2 minutes. Throw it in their oven along with the turkey and you'll be fine. What's the etiquette on preparing your dish at the person's house? Yeah, if you ask Kelly, oh. it's you're not allowed to. Well, cuz this is what dad wants to do. He wants to go to somebody's house and bring the appetizer or something. And it's something that requires the stove in the oven. And I'm like, you don't know <laughs> if they already have their own things in their oven. You can't start screwing with their temperature. Please. No. I mean, I no doubt. It's got to be easy. You have to ask. She's got a little bit of a right. point. You Lynn, have to ask. You have to ask. No, I'm but not I'm not going to ask. No, you're not asking because you're just bringing what <laughs> okay, you want. Okay, fuck it. Bring. I'm not asking. Right. But the appetizer is <laughs> going to be good. And it's going to be hot. What am I going to bring? Wait, what are you bringing? Spinach dip, that round, that hollowed out sourdough thing with spinach and whatever the hell Wait, the rest of I that shit bring, is. I want to bring brie. 
<laughs> Jordan's ex-girlfriend? No. Baked brie. <laughs> That's what you I want. Look at most of it. You can't take something hot, make it at home, and then schlep over to somebody's well, house that, and expect I it to still be good. there, but I would have to take over the oven. Just take it. You can find can a corner Can you just take this oven. turkey out so I can put my baked oh, brie in? Oh, <laughs> 10 minutes wouldn't make any difference to that turkey. No, you don't do Wouldn't that. make any difference to that turkey. So I have some pictures. Okay. Uh, let me find my pictures. The first one is what I posted on my f- on the Facebook yesterday morning after I talked to my mom and all kinds of people did. Words to live by. Words to live by and you need to do it. And I think a reminder is not a bad thing. And a bunch of people said, I'm going to do it right now. And then some people said, I wish I could. And that made me feel sad Aww. that yeah. they don't. So if you don't have a mom, then of course you call your dad, though the moms appreciate it more. Unless you're a father of daughters and then they really appreciate it and I wouldn't know what that's like. And if you don't have a mother or a father, I'd say there's somebody out there that deserves a phone call that probably doesn't get one very often. Hmm. You probably have some friends that don't call their parents. Hey, Mrs. Jenkins, it's uh, Susan. Just calling us. I was thinking about you. Oh, Susan, that's so nice. Thank you, dear. How have you been? It's one of those things. Find somebody old to call. That's true. When's the last time you got a call from someone you just didn't expect? Right. It was awesome. Yeah. Or an email or something, right? It's all good. But the phone call is nice. And the letter, wow. Oh, Those little kids. uh, Yeah, why don't you tell everybody about those kids? So those little kids, oh, I got to find... Hold on, I got to find that email. Do you have that that email, Kel? I can find it and forward it to you. Okay. You can just Mm -hmm. read it if you want. No, I cry every time. Okay. So uh, I, I was a, a second grade class here in San Diego. We talked about this. Chose me. One of the kids in the class got to pick who they wrote a letter to that month. It's all about an exercise in writing letters, right? Not typing, but writing, handwriting. Mm-hmm. So they've picked the San Diego Padres. They picked other people. They picked Sam the cooking guy, and, and the parent re- reached out and said, would it be okay if you know you get it, of course, and who's going to say no to the letters? So I get 25 super cute letters from second graders. So w- what's the obvious thing to do? You write them back. I wrote 25 letters back to these kids, and I hand wrote each one. Made my own little, you know, Sam the cooking guy writing paper with a little hand-drawn picture of my dumb face and Sam the cooking guy. And I wrote each one of the children back. And if they mentioned something about uh, my mom likes to watch the show, I'd say, hey, I'm glad your mom likes to watch the show. Tell the truth. If they, you just cr- you printed out a form letter. No, and no, no, no. I did in their uh, names. Seriously, every kidding, single one. Dear Nathan, I'm glad you and Snuggles like to watch my show on uh, Saturday night. Whatever it is, that kind of thing. So I write them back. And then do you have it? I'm trying. The teacher... The teacher wrote back to me. I have to read it because it's going to take me a minute. Oh, okay, when Kelly gets it, almost good, made me cry. So, so you're I blaming can't. you're not feeling good about yeah, your I just slowness keep, in finding the proper email. I like just keep typing in my to and my from and the date and everything. <laughs> just go life. go into your your. You forward it to your mom. I know that, so I'm in my sent file. So I go there. Know. Oh, come on! I, I really I'm want you trying, to have it. Darling. I really want you to have it. Anyway. No pressure. We'll find that. Okay, so back to my pictures. So Friday night, uh, Saturday night, I was at the um, Kawasaki's Disease Foundation Gala. 16 chefs from all over the country cooking table side for people. And here's who I took my picture with. The only one picture I wanted. You know who that is? Who watches Chopped? That is Amanda Freitag. Wait. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Nobody knows who Amanda that is. Amanda Freitag. You know, that's meaningless to you. To be completely honest, when you first look at that picture, yeah, it she just looks like you know a person. Your average. Well, she is a person. <laughs> ordinary person. She's Amanda Freitag from Chop. Amanda Frybag. And so, no, don't say that. I like her a lot. Frygag. Stop it. What was it again? Freitag. Oh, okay, Frybag. She's really nice. Mm. But here's what's interesting. So I start talking to her about Chop. Mm-hmm. I like her. She's my favorite. Right. I say, how long does it take you to shoot an episode of Chopped? It's a one-hour show. She goes, well, of course, the cooking time, 20 minutes for an appetizer, 30 for the entree, you know, whatever, that kind of stuff. That's Mm -hmm. all actual to-the-clock stuff. How long does it take 
them to shoot a one hour episode of uh, Chopped? 10 to 12 hours. Oh. Go, whoa, 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 whoa. Jeez. Are you kidding? She goes, yeah. There's a lot of that sitting around stuff. Wow. And she goes, and of course, I've got to get there early for make- makeup and stuff. And she goes, and the boys just come in and get a little gel and they're good to go. So she got an extra hour or so oh, of makeup beforehand and then 10 to 12 hours of shooting time. So you're saying that it's a, it, it's a long time because they're only te- there's only technically a half an hour or an hour of cooking time? I'm saying it's a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, in spite of the fact that it's only a one hour of it's oh, yeah, total that's, accumulated, that's what I was saying. right? But doesn't that to me that doesn't seem like that long to to shoot a thirty minute seems TV like a show long time to hours? me. I don't know. I and guess, I said, yeah. I said, I I've heard multiple sources, including the judges themselves on Top Chef, mm-hmm. that there's a lot of drinking on Top Chef. And they keep like a glass of vodka or whatever it is down on the side of their chairs. <laughs> Wait, the judges or the chefs? The judges. The judges. Oh. No, well, I asked Mike Isabella about that. He goes, uh-huh. yes, the judges drink quite heavily during the shooting of Top Chef. Wait, and wasn't that a huge thing with American Idol? Like Paula was getting trashed out of those Coke cups as she well, was judging? Well, nobody knows. She was just weird, period. I don't know if she had alcohol <laughs> in that. But Mike, Isabella, Mike Isabella said yes. The judges on Top Chef drink mm-hmm. a lot. The chefs themselves get wine or beer, nothing good, you know, after they've cooked. Amanda Freitag, I asked the same question too. She goes, there's no drinking at all on Chopped, none whatsoever. Why do you think it's different? I don't know. She goes, it just, she goes, honestly, it just wouldn't feel right. Hmm. Wow. Maybe because it's Food Network. Hmm. And they're stuck up or something. I have no idea. But this was the setup of the tables. Obviously, before anybody was in there. So, where's my cursor? So, there's eight people on this side, eight people on this side, and the chefs would stand right along here. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, there was each chef, uh, and there was 16 of them, had one or two uh, assistants or sous chefs with them. Cool. And they would cook all the food right there. Oh, right so there I in didn't front of them. Oh, know the setup. That's yeah. cool. It's kind of intimidating, so like, though. Right, here's a chef right here. And then right there, another chef. So these two chefs right here in the middle would be back to back to each other. Mm-hmm. And then further down, there's another table right here that had another chef standing. Oh, whoa. It. But look how cool that is. So you're, where do you get to do this? You're right there while the chef makes all this amazing food for yeah. you. Yeah. You want to know the best thing I ate? Yes. Yes. Well, I only ate one thing. I didn't get any of the food. <laughs> wow. I got nothing. I got sweetbreads that were turned into a dessert with rosemary ice cream. What? Oh, it was man. actually very good. What? Yeah, it was very good. Sweetbreads for sweet dessert. Breads. Wow. Hey, yeah, it's been about 10 minutes, by the way. Just, okay. Uh, okay, let's keep going. I'm in the store today looking for some uh, mm-hmm. whatever. I'm in the alcohol section. Here's what I come across. I don't know if you can see that. These are absolute unique edition vodka bottles. If you close up on it a little bit more, mm-hmm. you'll mm-hmm. see that they each have a, a unique number on them, oh. and they're painted in a unique way. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, who so, cares about that? Oh, I just noticed, like, the, the splotches. The splotches. Are these, like, Now, you off? notice, look, you notice right almost here. almost frozen to me. Those splotches, uh-huh. that splotch there is identical to that. Oh, so yeah, So there's some is. system that puts basically the main splotch on there, uh-huh. and then they get different colorings or coloration or whatever you would call it. And are those different flavor bottles? Or no, no, that's just vodka, vodka, straight oh. vodka. Wait, and so what's special about it? What's different? Just the bottle. That's just weird. The bottle. Isn't it weird? Yeah. It's a gimmick. I thought that was it's weird. A, it's a complete gimmick. And right beside yeah. it on the shelf are these sky bottles, and that's not just a different painting on the bottle. If we can take the picture of my computer, there you go, boys. That's that's fuzzy material. Really? <laughs> it's like, like velvety. It's stuff. velvety. Yeah. It's velvety material that that's stuff. cut out on that thing. Weird. As if that's not a gimmick either. Wow. No, it's just stupid. That was stupid. That is. And I then by know. the and then so the last picture, I walk out to my car mm-hmm. and the car right beside me in the front seat sleeping. Oh. Two of them. They were sacked out. And I know this back one looks like a skunk. <laughs> it does <It's> not. <laughs> that's an actual dog and that's an actual oh. dog. That one and in the front. 100% out. That one at the top, you can play uh, where's the head, where's the ass, just like Lucky. <laughs> exactly. Oh. All you can get is a paw out of that thing. Yeah. How cute were they? How about all those dogs that they brought in today to Helen Woodward? Oh, they came here east. to San Diego that were 
that were in the uh, the uh, they were in shelters Hurricane out Sandy. there. But wait, oh. I thought that they were like displaced from their owners and their homes for people that lost their homes. Oh no, they're not. They're dogs that were in shelters back there. So how sad is that? Wow. Yeah, These that's were super shelter sad. dogs. That's super oh. sad. Okay, should we get up and go look? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I can do that. You're good. Just take your time, Shannon. You're good. Okay, so let's see how this smells. This smells really good. Mm. Okay. That shit's almost, that's almost ready. Hey, you so need I gotta more time do, or no? Uh, more time to what? Oh, for the, the dip. Well, by the time I do this bread, I'm going to be fine. Oh, nice. I think I'm going to be fine. I maybe should have turned that thing on. I mean, I don't have to warm up the bread, but I like a little bit of a crunchy texture with this. Wait. Oh, is this that bread from last night? Yeah. <gasps> it's called Pugliese. Does anybody know I've how to never say that? had bread like this before in my life. Pugliese. P-U-G-L-I-E-S-E. Mm -hmm. Pugliese. It's delicious. It's Pugliese. delicious. But you know what made it even extra more delicious last night? Mm -hmm. Is I cut it this way. Straight down, whoosh, all the way this way, yeah. and then buttered it, and then I did it flat down on the Ooh. the flat top Dang, with awesome. the weight on it. Which you have a that. different you have a different name for that versus toast. What is it? Grilled bread. Grilled, grilled bread. bread. Yep. It's yep. and grilled bread is different than toast. Okay. Yeah, it's completely different than toast. Totally different, because heat changes things. Heat changes things, mm -hmm. but it. But here's the thing. I mean, the bread on the deal with the heat and the butter. Oh my God. Here comes Slappy. <laughs> Do you know why I call him Slappy? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, there it is, his big ass feet. <laughs> Size 13s. <laughs> All right, so we'll do, do the same thing that I did last night, sort of, but we'll just put a little bit of butter on these. Mm mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. And we'll just throw them on here. I know I'm not saying anything. It's okay. Sometimes a little quiet is not bad. S remember you said that. <laughs> hey, what does that mean? <laughs> so that we're in the car and I go, honey, can we just like look out the window for a little bit? <laughs> You don't well, get I all know, offended. I know, look, I know you guys say that I talk too much. I found myself talking uh, earlier today to nobody but the dogs. <laughs> oh, I for think sure. if some and then oh, so I go walking down the aisle at the supermarket today, just as I see a woman and her child take the little hand what's the little hand cart thing called? The little you know, the, what's the deal? Hand cart? Not hand cart, the little basket. Nothing. They had a little basket, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I watched the mother do this. Not sweep up crumbs. I watched the mother walk along, she's got her basket, and she puts it down. There's like three or four things in it, and she goes, come on, honey, we'll go to, and she names another store, and out she walks. And she just leaves the shit sitting right there in the aisle of the supermarket. <laughs> really? Right? Wow. So I'm, I'm going this way, just as she puts it down right here, and I go like this. I go, oh, so that's right where we're gonna leave our basket, is it? Fuzzy shoes, because she had like Ugg boots on that had a thing right here. Yeah. And I get over to the section I'm looking at, and I realize, oh, that's where you're gonna leave it, a eh? fuzzy boots. And I realize there's a woman right here bending down, <laughs> looking at some shit on the shelf that thinks I'm a whack. For but sure. I'm okay talking to myself. <laughs> and it's not that I want to hear myself talk. It's I catch it my I catch myself talking to Sunny all the time. Maybe I want to hear myself. It's a running commentary in your head. Uh -huh. you know it is. Okay. Hey, uh, Lar Larry says that uh, the bread is from Puglia, which is a region in southern Italy. It's the and, Bla and Blake says about? it's Puglisi, and we had this problem about 50 episodes ago. <laughs> Puglisi? Yep, that's what he says. Puglisi. Puglisi. Well, here's how it's spelled. I guess that could be Puglisi. Yeah, Puglisi. Puglisi. I'm not bad with accents and words. Why would I look at that and call it Puglies? That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Puglisi. All right. So I think this is going to be ready. I'm going to take one of these guys out. 
I hear the bread starting to do its thing. Oh, look at this, Shannon. This is nice. I'm going to put this right here. You see, it's starting to bubble a little bit. Oh, nice. I've got this dumb little thing. Let's see how these guys are doing. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let me, uh, while this is just finishing up, let me encourage you to uh, go check out Fixtures Living online at fixtureslivingcom for maybe some holiday gifts for yourself. And I'm not saying it has to be a new cooktop or a new refrigerator, new washer dryer. I'm just saying it's an idea store that you will get many ideas from. And it may be something simple that you see in one of the vignettes in the stores. They do sell things. They do have some cooking supplies and stuff like that that is beautiful and cool stuff to look at. Great, oh, great, uh, what are those? Uh, uh, pepper grinders. Uh, pepper grinders, right? And knives, and they've got some really cool stuff that you might like to check out. But I'm saying, it could be thinking for a holiday gift for you, a loved one, or the family. Fixtureslivingcom Fixtures Living in San Diego, Costa Mesa, and Rancho Mirage. And coming soon to Glendale, uh, up by Los Angeles. Not in Arizona. <laughs> Not Arizona, no, exactly. Okay, so here are these guys. Oh my God, is this going to be amazing? Hold on. So we get these guys like this. I'm not going to overdo anything. We're going to, oh, 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 shit, yes. Maybe I'll just cut them. Shall I do that? Mm-hmm. So now we've got a few more to go on here. I mean, yes, look, we all like crackers. But I think when it comes to something like this, something that's warm, that goes with the warm thing that you've just made, is super delicious. And just because there's crab in it, and I gotta have a little bit of color right here, I'm just gonna do a little old bay on the top mm. that you won't really see, but will be there lovingly waiting for me to Diane come. Diane actually this. just asked that. Did you put any crab seasoning in that like old bay? I just did now. Mm -hmm. And now, just a little bit. Look at the cheesy, mm. melty. Oh my God. That's a nice and crispy cracker, too. And a nice little crispy cracker, too. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. This is... Here's what's nice about this. You know what it tastes like? Crab. Crab. That's the key. Too many times you see these recipes that by the time you uh, put all the ingredients together, the shit tastes like something else. And it should taste like what it is. In this case, crab. Really delicious. You could put everything in the container and just take a little container like this and slip it in. You'd find two square three inches in the oven. Who cares what the temperature is? Just watch it. 450? Fine. Sl slide it in. You can do this. You don't have to worry about taking up somebody 